Ventura Elementary. As I sit by the warm, cozy fire, I just want to share with you on behalf of the fourth grade staff one of my favorite collections of the hat of Dr. Seuss. We'll be reading the Sneetches today. So grab your blankets, snuggle up beside the fire, and relax and enjoy. Now the star belly Sneetches had bellies with stars. The plain belly Sneetches had none upon thars. Though stars aren't so big, they weren't really so small, you might think such a thing wouldn't matter at all. But because they had stars, all the star belly Sneetches would brag, we're the best kind of Sneetches on the beaches. With their snoots in the air, they would sniff their snort. They hadn't nothing to do with the plain belly sort. And whenever they had met some, they were out walking, they'd hike right past them without even talking. When the star belly children went out to play ball, could a plain belly get in the game? Not at all. You only could play if your bellies had stars and the plain bellied children upon them of Nars. When the star belly Sneetches had frankfurter roast or picnics or parties or marshmallow toast, they never invited the plain belly Sneetches. They left them out in the cold in the dark of the beaches. They kept them away, never let them come near, and that's how they treated them year after year. Then one day it seems when the plain belly Sneetches were mopping and doping along on the beaches, just sitting there wishing that their bellies had stars, a stranger zipped up on the strangest of cars. And meet Mr. Sylvester McMonkey McBean. My friends, he announced in a voice clear and keen, my name is Sylvester McMonkey McBean, and I've heard of your troubles, I've heard you're unhappy, but I can fix that, I can fix it up chappy. I came here to help you. I have what you need, and my prices are low, and I work at great speed, and my work is 100% guaranteed. Then quickly Sylvester McMonkey McBean put together a very spectacular machine, and he said, you want stars like the star belly Sneetches? My friends, you can have them for only $3 each. Just pay for me the money and hop right aboard. So they clambered inside and the big machine roared and it clonked and it bonked and it jerked and it burped and it bopped them about. But the really, but really, it worked. When the plain belly Sneetches popped out, they had stars. They actually did. They had stars upon thars. Then they yelled at the ones who had stars at the start. We're exactly like you. We can't, you can't tell us apart. We're all the same now, you snooty old smarties. And now we can go to the Frankfurter parties. Good grief, groaned the ones who had stars at first. We're still the best Nietzsche's, and they are the worst. But now, how in the world will we know? They all frowned. In which kind is what, and the other way round? Then came Mr. McBean, with a very clean wink, and he said, things are quite bad, but not as bad as you think. So you don't know who's who, that's perfectly true. But come with me, friends, do you know what I'll do? I'll make you again the best Sneetches on the beaches, and all it will cost you is $10 eaches. Belly stars are no longer in style, said McBean. What you need is a trip through my star-off machine. This wondrous contraption will take off your stars so you won't look like Sneetches who have them on thars. And that handy machine working very precisely removed all the stars from their tummies quite nicely. Then with snoots in the air, they paraded around and they opened their beaks and let them out shout, We know who is who, now there isn't a doubt. The best kind of sneetches are sneetches without. Then of course, those with stars all got frightfully mad. To be wearing a star now was frightfully bad. Then of course, old Sylvester Mc Monkey McBean invited them into his star-off machine. Then, of course, from then on, you probably guessed, things really got into a horrible mess. All the rest of that day and on those wild screaming beaches, the fix-up chappy kept fixing up sneeches, off again, on again, in again, out again. Through the machine, they raced around and about again, changing their stars every minute or two. They kept paying money. They kept running through until neither the plane nor the star bellies knew which one was what and that was one which one was is and which one was that and which one was who 
then when every last cent, all their money was spent, the fix-up chappy packed up and he went. He laughed as he drove in his car up the beach. They'll never will learn. No, they can't. You can't teach a sneech. But McBean was quite wrong. I'm quite happy to say that the sneeches got really quite smart on that day. That the day they decided that sneeches are sneeches and no kinds of sneeches is the best on the beaches. That day, all the sneeches forgot about stars and whether they had one or not upon thars. And that, my friends, is the end of our story. I want to thank you for in taking the time to enjoy our video, and we wish you a very happy Read Across America.